Hi, Greg Koopman here. Uh, I'm going to talk to you today about uh, a couple best practices that you'll probably want to adapt immediately when you're creating standardized reports and dashboards. Uh, first of all, what you're going to see is something that Power BI automatically does for you, um, which in some cases is very good, like if you're profiling and consolidating. But like I say, if you're going to go ahead and create standardized reports and dashboards for a group of people, um, you're probably not going to want to do that. You have those, uh, those summations that it automatically provides for you. So let's take a look at what I'm talking about. So for example, in dim date, right? When I bring it in, anything that's an integer or it's going, or numeric, it's going to go ahead and add a sum aggregation to it. So what does that mean? Well, if I go ahead and click on calendar year and we look at it and let's say I push it into a table. Let me bring it over here so it's a little bit easier to see. Um, and I go ahead and I uh, transmit, translate that over to a table. Calendar year is 7338695. Now, that doesn't make sense. What that is, is it's taking every number uh, every year that's associated with the uh, fact internet sales so if we go to the model it's looking it's taking every calendar year like 2002 and 2004 whatever it is and it's taking since it's associated with the fact internet sales and it has like 60,000 rows in it it takes each one of those you know dates or that you rather the year calendar years and adds them all up and that's the number you're seeing here okay that's not what you want so what you need to do is, for a lot of different um, columns that you'll see, you need to eliminate that, that um, sum aggregation. So the way you do that is you highlight it, you come over to column tools, and you click here and say don't summarize. Okay? All right. Um, and then you see the summation symbol uh, goes away. Same thing with this fiscal year. You do the same thing, right? Okay, now, okay, now once you come over here, and let's try it again. So now I'm on calendar year. There you go. Now you see all your calendar years are in the appropriate, uh, appropriately formatted. Okay, so that's one thing that you want to uh, change right away. Okay, and so let's say we take uh, sales amount and we bring that into our uh, report so or into our visual right so we am going to click there and everything looks very good here um, it adds it up it, it sorts it and groups it by the calendar year uh, but the problem is is that by doing it this way in DAX later on when you need to do a little more advanced DAX uh, measures you need to many times refer to that measure by name. And this will allow you, as you click on it, as you see, it's really not in a DAX name formula type situation. So you're not going to refer to that by name. All right. What you really want to do is um, have the, it will, yeah, we have it. Uh, set up so that you click, you're going to unsummarize it. Okay. And what that now, it's really no longer a summation. So if I click on this and bring it in this report, all of a sudden you're going to see about 60,000 rows um, repeated. Okay. And because it does it for every line item. So it's not able to sum it to this to this aggregation of the calendar year. Uh, so that's what we still want to happen. So what I can do though is I can go ahead and take this uh, column name and in behind the scenes right inside the table if I go to the table itself here right and I go to sales amount the sales amount column, right? And change the name to something we really aren't going to use, okay? So we're going to change it because we're not going to see this this particular 
uh, name uh, outwardly in our selections. So I can change that name and what many people will call it is like row underscore sales amount or line underscore uh, sales amount. I'm just going to call row underscore sales amount because it's really just referring to the row, not to any aggregation. So I'm just going to say row underscore sales amount. Okay. So now the name has been changed. And now when I go back out to my report generator here, it will say row sales amount, right? Okay. But I still don't want row sales amount. I want it to be able to create a measure. So I'm going to come up here and create a measure. New measure. And I want to use the word sales amount because it's a good, it's a good label that I, that I do want to use. So let me go back to that again. So I'm going to say sales amount. In this case, I'm actually going to give it a space. And I'm going to say equals. And I'm going, and this is, we're in DAX now. We're doing some DAX here. So I'm just going to say sum of, um, and I'll say the row. And there it is, row sales amount, right? Okay, so now I have my measure. And I'll be able to use that sales amount name as a measure name in further in DAX in the future which is what I really want to do. And notice when you look at the icon here, um, it has the calculated, the measure here. So that's going to be useful to us later. So if I take this now and I click on that, but let's go ahead and just go ahead and remove the row. And there you go. Now we have our, our uh, aggregates by whatever we were categorizing by. The row sales amount, we're going to go ahead then and would, we would hide that okay and now we're dealing with sales amount from now on in uh, and let's just say uh, we're going to do quantity order quantity right so if I did order quantity I'm sorry so right now if I went and did a new measure and I wanted to say uh, quantity or, or sales amount divided by quantity right so I say sales amount right D divided by quantity uh, order quantity you see order quantity I type in order you don't see anything you can't divide it by order quantity all right it has to be um, a sum so let's just cancel that for a minute let's say I even put in made this already a sum let's say I went it back up here and made that a summation okay now it has a sum in front of it. Now let's try creating a measure with it. So I'm going to say uh, divide uh, sales amount, right? Divided by order quantity, uh, order quantity. And notice again, you don't see it. You can't do it, right? So that summation thing doesn't work right, okay? It won't work. So that's why, again, so if you really want this to be able to divide sales amount by order quantity for some reason, we would then have to come out of here and take order quantity. And I would just probably, well, we could leave it as order quantity and just add a, uh, to, we can't do the same name, right? So I take order quantity, I remove the summation from it. Don't summarize. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and create a new measure, which is just going to be, I'm just going to call it order quantity, but I'm going to put a space between it. So that way, um, so I create a new measure. I'm just going to call it order quantity with a space between it. So therefore it's unique. It's not uh, using the same name. It will allow that. And I'll say, again, sum of uh, order quantity. Now here, in this case, it will find the order quantity. Okay. And now I have my a real measure called order quantity. And if we look here, you'll see that there, right? Now I want to come back up here and say new measure. 
Now I'm going to divide uh, the sales amount aggregate measure by the order quantity aggregate measure. Okay, so which we'll call um, I don't know. We'll call it price for lack of a better for lack of anything better. Average Okay, any we'll just call it measure. Okay, so we're just say sales amount, boom, okay, divided by um, order quantity. Okay, now you see order quantity is a measure, right? And uh, we have our new measure. Well, it doesn't like that name, so. Um, so we'll call it uh, test measure. Okay, so let's call this test measure. And now that will work. Okay. But we couldn't do that using with all these sums. And we're going to need to do that kind of thing. Okay. So that's why uh, when you're creating these reports, you really don't want to use those sums. Those aren't going to do you any good. All right. Eventually you're going to hide most of this stuff. But what you're going to have left over is mainly measures and anything you want to group by. That's all you really need after after it's all said and done. Um, so that's what my point is. We need to get rid of these, all of these. So you have to click on it, uh, change the sum to no sum. N then possibly if you want to call, a lot of times these names are pretty good. So freight, for example, you probably want to call the measure freight, right? When you create it. So what you would do is go into, again, like we did before, we could go in and call that, change the name of that freight column. And that's row freight. So when we come back out, we should see row freight here. There it is. We get rid of the summation on it. Right? Now we go ahead and create a new measure. So what I'll do is I'll create a measure for every one of these metrics. Um, and call it, and, and change the names and make it use this kind of uh, technique so that we can so let's say freight equals um, sum of row freight right now it's going to be a good aggregate it's going to make for a good measure and i can reuse and i can use that in other formulas okay obviously like promotion key this kind of thing you want some promotion key and you probably wouldn't even show it Okay, in most cases, so then you'd hide it. Uh, but I'll go through that later. But really, that's a, the point of this video, and um, is to get rid of these sums and replace them with a real measure, uh, so you can ex be more, you know, extend your power of using DAX in the future. Okay. Okay. Very good. Thank you.